I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Come on, we're going to bless the Lord this morning. Come on, get up, stand to your feet, wherever you are, in your living room, in your kitchen, in your bedroom. We're going to praise him today. We're going to lift him up. We're going to bless the name of Jesus today. Come on. Bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Say it again. Bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Come on. Bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Say it again. Bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord with me. Say it again. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord with me. Say it again. Praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord with me. and just bless his holy name. We serve an awesome God. We serve an awesome God. Come on, let's bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless you.
he has done great things. just want to remind you of one thing. It reaches the highest mountain and it
It's power. It's power. Never, never lose. It's power. The blood of love will never lose. It's power. It's power. Oh, oh, oh. It will never lose. It will never lose. This do in remembrance of me. I hope you have prepared for this time of communion by gathering all of your essentials together, families sitting around, watching and listening as we lead you through this time of communion. I want to talk about this morning as Jesus, the mediator, the great mediator. Hebrews 12, 23 through 25 says this, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God the judge of all, to the spirits of the just men made perfect. Verse 24, to Jesus, the mediator, of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. See that you do not refuse him who speaks for they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth. Much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. Now let's go to 1 Timothy, the second chapter. 1 Timothy, the second chapter, verses 1 through 6. That's 1 Timothy, second chapter, verses 1 through 6. Therefore, I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Verse 4, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Now, Jesus as mediator, this is the crowning excellence of the new covenant in contrast to the old covenant. The new covenant, the gospel of Jesus Christ, is now a force in the land and will be to the end of time. End of the world. And Jesus himself, the son of God, the brightest of the father's glory, God manifested in the flesh, the maker and preserver of all things, the savior and the judge of all men, he is now its mediator. He is the great mediator. Now, what's a mediator, you might ask? It's one who acts as an intermediary or a go-between, if you will, with the opposing sides in order to bring about a settlement. We were enemies with God until Jesus showed up. A mediator attempts to influence a disagreement between two parties with the goal of dissolving or resolving the dispute. And Jesus resolved the dispute when he got up. He said, all power is in my hand. As we partake of this Lord's Supper, we need to remember that it's because of the great mediator, Jesus, that we are able to stand before God clothed in righteousness 
So what happens is, is that God, uh, Jesus exchanged his glory for our unrighteousness. And, and he exchanged it. He changed places with us. He took our place and he became unrighteous. And, and, and we now have the right to the Father. Thank God for Jesus. He exchanged our sin for his righteousness, according to 2 Corinthians 5.21. That's good news. That's good news for all who believe. Jesus Christ is the great mediator. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for sending your son to be the go-between between us and you. Father God, we thank you as we eat this bread as a symbol of his body and his remembering. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that, and, may, and we ask that may our thoughts, Lord, center upon what Jesus did, what he did in his role as mediator as we partake of this cup. Father God, we thank you. We ask that you forgive us, Lord, for any sins that we may have committed or omitted during this time. Father God, we pray that you take this, that which is natural, and turn it into a spiritual. Father God, so that we may remember Jesus, your son, as the great mediator. We thank you in advance. We do praise you. We give you all glory. In Jesus' precious name and for his sake, amen. Now, on the same night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he broke it, he said, this is my body, do this in remembrance of me. Take it, eat ye all of it. And in likewise manner, he took the cup, which is the cup of redemption, the blood of the great mediator. He took the cup and said, this is my blood. Take it, drink ye all of it. And the Bible says that they went out on the Mount of Olives and they sang a hymn. We're not sure what the hymn was, but I'm sure it had something to do with the blood. Come on, let's sing this morning. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross, and I know it was the blood for me. I know it was the blood. Oh, they pierced him in the side. Yeah. They pierced him in the side. They pierced him in the side for me. One day when I was lost, he died. He died upon the cross. And I know, and I know it was the blood for me. Oh, he never said a mumbling word. Oh, yeah. He never said a mumbling word. He never said a mumbling word for me. Oh, well. One day when I was lost, he died. He died for the cross. And I know. And I know it was the blood for me. Well, he's coming back again. Oh, yeah. He's coming back again. I know it was the blood 
God bless you. Praise God. Praise his holy name. God is good. The Lord is good. Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend Trainer. Thank you so much for that devotional. It he is the propitiation, the go-between, the stand between. He settles it for us all. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we greet you in the name of Christ this morning, and we praise God for this opportunity we have to worship him once again. I'll just be brief in my, in my uh, emphases uh, for this morning. I want to say thank you very much to our, to our, to our deaconesses who came out with my, my wife yesterday as we celebrate, celebrated the women and uh, celebrated mother-daughter giving out the gifts to them and even had a lady to come by asking, what are y'all doing? And uh, so in my possibility, she would be tuning in on or with us uh, on this day. So we praise God for that. Thank you all for that outreach. We appreciate that. And for those of you who went to the prayer walk for our schools, thank you so much. You know who you are. Thank you, Ms. Pam, for giving us leadership on that. We appreciate what you're doing there. We got um, some, some statistics and some reports that we'll give to you a little bit later on on our Facebook page, but thank you all. For some of you are on the phone praying. Some of you came out to walk to pray. Some of you are going to be praying this week, but our kids in Doug Douglas County and other uh, systems go to school and so uh, this week, so we want to be praying for them. Pray that they'll stay focused. Pray that they will learn not only academics, but learn about biblical, about our character. Our children will learn about biblical character, but building character uh, in, in them. And also, Lord, that you would just, we just pray that he would just watch over them during this pandemic. Amen. We praise God for this opportunity we have on this day that he's given to us. Bless his name. I'm going to come once again in Joshua chapter number six. Look at a few more verses. Get to the the uh, third point that I wanted to make on this today in terms of talking about his promise, and then even next week I'll probably still be in chapter 6 because there's one more thing I want to share with you on that. Thank you so much for what you all are doing. Thank you, Anthony and Eric and Marshall. You all do a wonderful job. Sometimes we have technical difficulties, and I know that you're doing your best. It's not your, it's not your fault. It's just that when the airways don't work, we just keep right on going. Amen. Amen. I want to thank our musicians. I want to thank all of you all for, for being here today uh, and, just, and just sharing with us. Uh, Alan, Damon, and Ted, thank you so much. Thank you, Miss Nadine, uh, for what you're doing over there with the PowerPoints. And Maya, thank you for being here today. Yeah. Maya Torbert for sharing with us by way of song. D is going to be out a few weeks, and uh, we're glad that you are here uh, this morning to share with us. So come and share a song with us. And then I will come and share from Joshua chapter number six as you focus in again on what God would have for us in this season. Amen.
a consciousness of his presence. One of the things we said two weeks ago or so was that we're missing the fear of God. <clears throat> we're not honoring him and worshiping him and we're not having that sense of awe that we should ha have of him. Amen. So thank you so much for reminding us of that. Amen. Praise his holy name. Still in the book of Joshua. Still in the book of Joshua on this day. Book of Joshua. What a great book. We got to chapter number six. I'll read just a few verses. If you've been with me a little while, you've seen that we've gone through verses all the way up to verse number 20. I may step back at a few more verses along the way, but um, let's just see where the Lord, where the Lord will lead us even, even on this day. Amen. Amen. Father, bless us now and bless your word as we come to this time. Thank you for the opportunity we have to share in this moment. We rebuke any spirit anything that would touch any of the technology at this point, that faith will come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We love you now. We give you glory. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Well, let's look at chapter number six, Joshua. And you know, they're at the walls of Jericho. They have made it. They've crossed over the, the Jordan, which is a period of transition. I won't spend much time on that. But, but, but you may be going through a season of transitioning in your life even right now. And so we want to make sure that you understand what, what are the next instruction that God wants to give as it relates to your, his next move in your life. His next move in your life. Amen. So let's look at this once again. I see here that he said, the Lord said to him in verse number two, I have see, I have given you given Jericho into your hand, his king and the mighty men of Baalah. You must march, you shall march around the city. Verse number three, all you men of war, and you shall go around the city once. This shall you do for six days. And the seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times. And the priests shall blow the trumpets. And it shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall down flat and the people shall go up every man straight before him. And then you see that it happened. Down in verse number 15, but it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and marched around the city seven times in the same manner. On that day only they marched around the city seven times. And on the seventh time, verse 16, it happened when the priest blew the trumpets that Joshua said to the people, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. And so in verse number 20, and so when the people shouted, so the people shouted when the priest blew the trumpets, and it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with, the great, with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and took the city. Well, well, how did it fall? How did it fall? Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 30. Because there was not even a seam in it until they obeyed. Chapter number 11, Hebrews, verse number 30. By faith. The walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days by faith. Oh, yeah, by faith. And we've gotten to this point where we've said, how, how, what do we need to do to overcome our Jerichos? Look, look back at some of the other messages that we've given to see what, what we've suggested with some of the Jerichos. I don't know what yours is, but, but, but what, it, what it basically means is that as I go through this transition is, is somewhere between the, all, the already and the not yet. It, it is somewhere between what God has already given me and what he has for me because they are at the, 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 the beginning portion of this journey. It's not done yet. And I don't want you to think today, don't you believe one moment that God is finished with you. You're in a transitional period. And I still believe that the best is still yet to come, that your better days will be your, better, than your, better than the days you've had before in Christ and in him for, the, for his glory. Yes, Mayor, for his glory. For, for, for his glory. Everything we do. It is for, for his glory. And so we've said thus far that what needs to happen in these verses is that we need to have a consciousness of God's presence. In other words, we need to see, we need to watch, keep watching, keep watching. We need to keep walking, keep marching, keep marching, keep, keep worshiping. Sometimes it doesn't seem like it makes sense, but just keep doing it, just keep doing it. Just, just keep marching, keep, keep worshiping, keep keep watching, keep keep waiting. You say, oh, I'm tired of waiting, just wait some more. 
because you don't want to do in, you don't want to go in until he's there with you. You got to have a consciousness of his presence. You've got to have a relationship with him so that you know that he is with you. That's important. Regardless of what the walls do or don't do, you got to know he's with you. And one thing that he promises is that I'll be with you. And then when it is time to shout, shout. It's time to wait. It's time to watch. It's time to worship. It's time to walk. And then he says, at the proper time, at the proper time, which is his timing, his timing, not my time, but his timing, he says the walls will come down. And then not only a consciousness of his presence, the, the, the second one is to have a commitment to his plan commitment to his plan. And we said last week that the truest form of worship is obedience. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. We, we, we go back to last week's message, you'll see. It doesn't make sense, but trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus is to trust and obey. Just do what he says. Because if the walls are going to come down, it won't be coming, be coming down by our might or by our strength, but by his spirit. What are you praying for? What, what's your Jericho? What, 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 is, what is your Jericho? What, what is it that God is asking you to do? I'm, I'm, let me go to the questions here. What, what, what is your Jericho? What is your Jericho? I'm, I'm, I'm moving down to the latter part of the, of the message to ask the concluded, conclusion, uh, concluded questions. In the beginning, what's your Jericho? What's your Jericho that you face in your life? Is there a wall that seems to stand as an opposing obstacle between God and you? What is it? What is it? Here's the second question we have to, have you looked at the Bible to see what God says about it? I know we look everywhere else, but have you looked in the Bible? Have we looked in the scriptures? Have we even as we looked at other people as they've talked to us and verified in Scripture? Don't listen to anybody that can't verify it in Scripture, either by text or by a scriptural principle that he gives to us because God's word is very, very principle-oriented. It is very, very uh, practical. It's very applicable, if you will. His word is not something we got to go and try to figure out and all. No, no, no. He says, if you know me, I'll speak to you. I guarantee you that. Here's the last question we're going to ask. Are you willing to follow his prescription? That's the question. Do, have, have, do you have a Jericho, right? Have you looked to God for the answer? And now that you have the answer, will you follow what he says? Oh, my God. Help us to do that. Help us to do that. I want us to look today at this third part of this uh, issue of Jericho's walls falling. We've got the consciousness of his presence and the commitment to his plan. But, but this last one is that we need to have confidence in his divine promise. What he promised he would do. He will do. And that's why it's so important that you know that he's with you. See, when you know that you know that he's with you, then you have a better chance, you have a better opportunity to commit to the plan. Therefore, it's demonstrating that you are confident in his promise. In his promise, in his promise. I want us to look at some of that uh, even, even today. And it takes something that Oswald Chambers has told us and that we've been having as a theme for all of this year. And, I, and possibly even last year, I mentioned it before we got it. But here it is. If we're going to walk with him and if we're going to claim and have confidence in his promise, here's what it takes. It takes unconditional surrender. That's what it takes. That, that's, what, that's why we wave the white flag. That's why we say, wave it in the morning, wave it in the noonday, wave it before you go to sleep. And I mean, with no, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm dealing, I'm telling you, I'm dealing with this myself. Don't think I've overcome all. No, no, no. I have my own struggles that sometimes I say, oh, Lord, can I, can I take that flag? Can I take that back? He says, no, 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 you, you already gave it to me. 
and you gave it to me. And that's why I use this as a symbol to remind me every day just in case I want to take it back. He said, no, 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 you gave it to me. But Lord, what about this? He said, no, don't give me any conditions. It's unconditional that you surrender to me. Why? Because you trust me. See, you don't know what I'm about to do. All you know is that you know me. You can't figure out God's activity, but you can trust his character. Yeah, yeah, you can trust his, his character is good. Now, what he does with the activity, we don't know. But whatever he does, it is well. It, 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 it is well. I have confidence in him. And listen, if we're going to have confidence in his promise, it's going to take unconditional surrender. And unconditional surrender takes discipline. I want to show you right here in the text, Reverend Train. I want to show you right here in the text. I'm not making this up. I'm just trying to help myself leave Sunday and get to my Monday. Or even my Sunday afternoon. <laughs> you said you could devil give you a day, but he doesn't give you a day now. <laughs> right after church. I, I'm going to get you ready right after church, after church service. Here it is. Unconditional surrender takes discipline. I'm going to show you what these men did, what these people did, these boys and girls that followed these men. Look at what they did. Confidence in God's promise, and, and it's going to take discipline, but in the same breath. <laughs> discipline for a period demands silence. Now, there are some times when God says, shh, you've talked about it enough. Shh. Look, 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 at, look at the sight. I want you to see it in verse number 10. Look. Now Joshua had commanded the people saying, you shall not shout. Don't shout. I, I, and make any noise with your mouth, with your voice. Nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you, shout. Then you shall shout. Even if you know you have the victory ahead of time. I see, that they, they could have shouted. And sometimes, it's, and I'm not saying don't, don't worship the Lord. And all. I'm saying that there are sometimes in situations we try to still deal with it by trying to explain things. And God is saying, no, 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 you don't need to explain me. See, we try to explain things sometimes because we look so bad. Everybody else is doing well. Everybody else is doing fine, it seems, though, though to us. Especially our enemies seem to be doing fine. So we want to be able to say, look at me, I'm doing better. God says, hush. You don't have anything to prove to anybody. You have confidence in my promise. And so you don't have anything to say right now. All I want you to do is watch and walk and worship and wait and, it, and, and what I do will become the first witness. Look at, look at verse number 16. And the seventh time it happened that when the priest blew the trumpets that Joshua said to the people, now you shout at the proper time. Look at verse number 20. He says, so the people shouted when the, peop the, people shouted when the priest blew the trumpets. <sighs> what am I saying to us? Unconditional surrender takes silence. And when you're taking, when you're silent about it, it doesn't mean that you don't do some things. I'll show you that a little bit. But, but sometimes we, we murmur too much. We talk about it too much. Instead of just praying about it, the question you've asked, Mr. Sinead, is, is have you prayed about it more than you've talked about it? Whatever it is, you think about whether it's a person or a thing or what. He says, just be, just be quiet. All I want you to do, follow my instructions. I have confidence in his promise because I have committed myself to his plan because I am aware of his presence. Yeah. And when you become aware of his presence, you can stick to the plan so you can have confidence in his promise. Yeah. I'm talking to myself here. Y'all can join in on my conversation. I've struggled this week with some things that I know he told me. And he says, it's not time yet. Hush and walk. <laughs> yes, 
And so unconditional surrender, first of all, takes silence. But then it also takes self-control. Yes, it, it's discipline, self-control. It takes self-control. Look, look at the self-control. Now, I want you to notice in every one of these verses I want to read in the next few uh, seconds here. They are, they have men that are armed. And, and you're a dangerous person when you're armed. I'm ready to fight now. Arm with this first, my mouth just goes. But these guys got whipped. Let me read. Uh, verse number three. And you shall march around the city, all you men of war. Verse number seven. And he said to the people, proceed and march around the city and let him who is armed. Verse number nine. Verse number nine. And so, he says, the armed men went before the priests. Verse number 13, it says here that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram horn went forth the, of the ark and went and continually blew the trumpets and their armed men went behind. And then verse number 16, I read it again. He says, in the seventh day it happened when the priests blew the trumpets that Joshua said to the people, shout for the Lord has given you the city. Now the city was doomed for destruction. All who were in it, only Rahab and the harlot shall live and she shall and, and all who were with her in the house because she hid the messengers and they, that, they, that they sent. Look at verse number 20. So the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets and it happened when the people heard the trump sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down, that the people went up into the city, every man straightway. The armed men, what am I getting at? Now it was time to fight, but there was a point in which it, they didn't. Now, now look at verse 21. And then they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman. We'll get to that next week. What, what am I saying? I'm saying... There comes a time that even though you may be armed and God has equipped you with it, he says, there'll be a time to fight. Right now, I want you to be quiet and I don't want you to draw a sword. When you hear the trumpet, then you shout. When you hear the trumpet, now it's time to destroy. Oh, don't get me wrong. You've got to confront Jericho. There are some folks who never, well, I don't want to hurt any feelings. No, 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 no. No, there's a time for that. But then there's a time when God, when, listen, I tell you when the time is, when God says go. And you've got to take action. But only as you're disciplined to be silent, and to be armed and not shoot. I'll give her a piece. I'll give him a piece of my mind. King, I got the last word. What happened to God's word? And you know sometimes God is saying, leave that alone right now. Don't talk about that right now. Leave it. Don't tell anybody else. Don't go to anybody else. And some of us are good for getting on the phone and telling other folks. Getting our crew together. And God is saying, no, y'all, even if you do get your crew together, just march and wait. I know it looks bad. I know it looks bad when, when sickness is there. I know it looks bad when the family has problems. I know it looks bad when the church has problems. I know, I know, I know God says, I see it but I'm equipping you now. Be silent. Stay under control. Because you know how it is when we feel like we have the advantage. And the test of true character is to have the advantage and still obey. <laughs> because the real character of Ben Lane comes out and the real character of you come out in critical circumstances. The real you comes when you test it. Yeah. yeah. So he says, if you have confidence in my promise, 
even though I may equip you, still wait. And then, and then I, I noticed here, just this past week as I was looking here, that unconditional surrender has within the mix what uh, John Parker calls the mind and the thine effect. I, I'll explain. I want to get that out first. Uh, notice, uh, uh, let, let, me, let me read verse 17. Verse 17. Now the city shall be doomed by the Lord to destruction. It and all who are in it. On the Rahab the harlot shall live. She and all who are with her in the house because she hid the messengers that, went, that we sent. And you, by all means, abstain from the accursed things, lest you become accursed when you take up the accursed things and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble, and trouble it. But the silver and gold and vessels of bronze and iron are consecrated to the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. What, 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 are, we, what are we saying here? Not only did they have to just, gotta be quiet and say nothing and be armed and ready to fight. But when you get over there, I want to tell you now, when you take it over, there's going to be a lot of silver and gold. Don't touch it. Don't, 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 don't. Why? Why? Because there's that which is mine, God's, and there's that which is thine, yours. And there's a difference between what's mine and what I let be thine. I'm losing some folks here because some folks are taking some shortcuts. I, 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 I want to obey God, but, but I see this loot. I see the spoils. I see the silver, I see the gold, I see the accursed things that he told me not to touch. He says, no, don't touch, don't even touch it. It's mine. And sometimes when we're waiting, we want to give God just a little bit more help. And God, wouldn't have, God wouldn't have all this in front of me and not want me to use it for myself. No! Why he even put it there? Jonah, why is that ship down there? Jonah, if the God didn't want you to get on the ship, he would not have put the ship at the harbor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And sometimes we set ourselves up because we want to take shortcuts. And God says, no, 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 no. Stick with the plan. Don't change the plan. Understand that there is a mind that which is God's and a thine that which he lets us have. And, and, and what he says, if you draw two circles and see in the middle, that God's and God's, and in the middle he says, that's yours. Now, it's still mine, but, but that's what I allow you. Adam and Eve, you can have all the trees, but don't touch that one. Am I making sense? Because some of us have taken God's money and used it to pay for something because I'm going to help God out. He says, no, no, no. Some of us have hooked and crooked in the name of Jesus just to help God out. He says, no, no, no. Don't just stick with the plan. Be honest with the plan. Don't change and don't touch it. Now, he, te now he tells them this before they even get in there. This is mine, and when it's time, I'll show you thine. Hey, oh, what, what, what is it, not only just about money, but what is it that God has given to you for yours to be used for his glory? And even that needs to be used for his glory because he said, make sure that you don't use the accursed things. I, you see, because some, we try to take everything and try to give God glory with it. We say, God said, no, 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 I got to sanctify it first. Thine and mine. I'm learning that. That I don't want to get, and you'll see in chapter 7, somebody didn't listen to this. Somebody said, There's always one. <laughs> a 
But he said, don't touch it, don't look at it, don't even, it's, it's all that silver. I know you've heard about Jericho, about how, how much they got. But stay away from it. There are some things people, God, people say, well, God, I, I know you need some help, but we, God said, no, 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 get married. Well, you know, uh, it's more economically feasible. If we just live together, God says, no, get married. You, you don't need to help me out. Uh, I, I, what's mine is mine. It was thine. I've let you do. Don't, don't bring me the accursed things. That's a totally different subject. <laughs> but, but I'll be back. I, I'll be back on that one. Confidence in his promise allows him, allows us to be silent, to be self-controlled, and to be aware of that which belongs to him, the mind and the thine. Wow, that's just what I picked up this week. I hadn't even gotten to the other stuff yet. But look at this, look at this. Look, 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 he says in verse 15. They came, they got up early. They marched around the city seven times. Seven times they did it. And Joshua said, get, get ready to shout. And then verse number 20, when they did shout, the walls came down. What, 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 what are we saying? We're saying here that victory comes from the Lord. That's where it comes from. It doesn't come from us. It is, it's, 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 it's not us. It, it is God hearing his instructions and obeying him, Hebrews 11.30, by faith. The walls came down. The walls came down. And that means obeying God when you don't understand it. Right? So, 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 so Noah... Look how foolish he looks. Look, look how foolish he looks. Reverend Trent, you talked about him two, three, four, one, about a month or two ago. Look how foolish he looks out there building an ark with your, with your son-in-law, with your sons and daughter-in-laws and I mean, family and, and, and all these sinners all around you that are talking to you and, and you're saying you, you're building an ark. They come all around. They, you look you look. You look ignorant. You look, you look ridiculous. You look, what, what are you doing, Noah? What are you doing, Noah? I, I'm building an ark. Uh, what, Noah, Noah, why are you building an ark? Because God says it's going to rain. Uh, Noah, one question. What's rain? We've never seen it before. But why are you still doing this, Noah? Because the Lord told me to. I have confidence in his promise. David, David, all you did, you, you were supposed to just come and bring your, your brother some bread and some water. Why don't you just mind your business, David? <laughs> David said, no, no, I'm on a, I, I came from one mission, but I got called to another one. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I walked up here, and I, I, not that I hate people or anything, but he said, I just don't like the way that he's, uh, that this big giant that I'm hearing is blaspheming my God. And all of you scary cats around here letting it happen, and you have nothing to say about it, David. Go on back home. Go on. I know you're here just to see the fight. No, no, no. I'm getting in the fight. Because yeah, right. I trust in his promise. So David comes and he stands and he sees how puny he is and sees how big that man is. And they said, David talk, starts talking to him, and they said, David, you better go home. He's too big. David said, No, no, no. He's too big to miss. I can't miss him. Can't miss him. He's a big target, and next time you get a big problem, don't start worrying about it. Just say, you know what? It's too big for God to miss. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, you ought to just call the roll on that, and I could. But trusting his promise. Trusting his promise. Victory comes because there comes a, listen, oh, 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 let me say this, and I'll be finished. There comes a time when we trust and obey God, that God takes over. 
just like the enemy took over before. Now, God, because you've trusted Abraham, you've trusted and obeyed. I know you've made your mistakes with Sarah and with Hagar and all, but Abraham, it's on me now. Sarah will have that boy. Now, I do know that you love me. You don't have to kill the boy. I know you trust me. David, just throw the stone somewhere between David throwing the stone and somewhere when he hit Goliath in the face, in the forehead, God gave an extra shot. And what am I saying? All you got to do is just get to the point where God takes over. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, what's that? Supernatural conquest happens when God takes over the battle and then God fights for you. Yeah. you. You just got to get to that point. You say, well, how do? How long will it take? I don't know, but just wait on him long enough because when he gets in the fight, ah, <sighs> I think I told you, I, I tell you again, I, 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 I never had a fight when I was a little boy. Never had one. Didn't stick around long enough to be around. Didn't stick around long enough. But one day, I was playing football over on the next street on Mimosa Drive there, and, uh, and Larry and Don and all of us were there. You remember? I told you about this. And so uh, Don said something to me. He said to me, I don't know what I did. I never hurt anybody. Play, playing football. We were playing football in the street, right? And so Don said to me, Don said to me, he said, Ben, you come through here one more time, I'm going to hurt you. In the street. I, mean, I won't be running this ball. No, no, no. Before the fight even started. Before I even got the next ball. Larry, my brother, stepped in. Big brother Larry stepped in and said, Don, you can't touch my brother. If you're going to touch him, you got to touch me first. And so Don said, bring it on. And so that way, there they were in the street fighting. Don hit Larry. Larry hit Don. Don hit Larry. Larry hit Don. I, he said, how do you know all that? I stood there and watched the whole thing. <laughs> I ought to be ashamed to tell it, but I'm not. My big brother took over for me yeah. and took the fight. I couldn't have beat Don by myself. I didn't have to throw a lick. Larry took care of him, yeah. even with a bruise on his head. Yes, sir. And what am I saying? There comes a time when God says, if you'll just let me, I'll get to the, thank you, Jesus. I'll let, I'll fight it for you. Yes, sir. I'm closing. I'm going. I'm going. God takes the victory to another level and lets us know. And another reason God has you to wait so long and for it to get so big is that he knows that if you did it when it was small, you would have taken the credit. And so God says, I'm going to let it get so big. I'm going to let the Red Sea get so wide. I'm going to let it be so boisterous. I'm going to let the sea mess up so that when I do part it, you can't say you did it. Yeah. Yes, sir. And so you need to wait on him because he's waiting on you to surrender. Yeah. Oh, yes, he is. He says that there are some things that ought to just happen. The battles are won because the victories cannot be explained. You ought to have some things in your life that can't be explained. I'm finished. I'm finished. I, I, I'm stopping, rather. I'm stopping. I hope we help somebody today. We'll pick it up again next week, but I hope we help somebody this week to say, Lord, listen, I need for you to fight for me this week. I need for you to fight me. For, sh 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 show me what I need to do. And he'll say, quit talking about it. He'll say, don't fight like they fight. And he'll say, when it does happen, take only what I give to you. Nothing more, nothing less. Because what, what, is, what is God up to? God, God, God is up to exalt, more exalting himself. He, he is up to evangelizing the sinner. He, he, he's up to equipping the saints. He, he, he's up to evicting Satan. It's, it's bigger than just you and me. It's bigger. We're part of God's plan. I'll, I'll pick up there on next week. God, God is doing something great. Will you, will you just receive it? I'm asking myself first. Let me ask a question I asked earlier. What, what, what's your Jericho? And are you searching the scriptures to find the answers for it? Here's the big question. Will you decide to follow Jesus? 
with no turning back, no, 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 no turning back. God, help the folks. Help us all, Lord. Begin with me in the pulpit here. And help me this week to walk with you and to worship you and to see that you are in control, that there comes a point in this battle when you fight for us. And God, whatever we need to do, sometimes marching, sometimes marching means going to look for a job. Not just staying home, but going to, sometimes finances may get difficult, so I may have to cut back on something financial. You see, you're still marching. Sometimes it means a troubled marriage where you need to go and read some books and go to counseling. Sometimes it means that while you're looking for a mate that you trust and obey him and say, Lord, what is it that you want me to do? And you live holy and you live morally and, you, and ethically. You trust him. You let him do that. It doesn't mean you don't do anything you just trust him and follow him father there's somebody out there who doesn't know you we trust today that they'll come to know you even as we speak we praise you today somebody who needs to come to Christ give their lives to you even right now speak to their hearts is there somebody here somebody out there today who would say yes Lord I need to follow you Help me to get over my Jericho in the name of Jesus. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to get to know him. You need to come and trust him with all your heart and mind and soul. God bless you today. If you need a church home, let us know that you want to be a part of what God is doing in, at Cornerstone. We praise God for you today. Amen. Amen. Jesus died on the cross for you. He arose from the grave and coming back for you. Amen. Amen. Let me ask you a question. Do you know Christ? Please come to know him in this day. Amen. Amen. Give God praise for his word today. Amen. Amen. You ought to come to know Jesus Christ. Only thing you'll ever regret is that you didn't come sooner to get to know him. Amen. 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 Let us know. Let us know that you've come to follow Christ. You've come to follow him. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. All right. Hey, I trust you have a blessed week. We've got some things on the calendar. You'll be able to see that coming up this week. Be sure that you are in our Bible study this week, prayer meeting this week. Also, there's a seminar coming up also on August the 14th. If you could just leave that up a little bit so people can go and register for that seminar on finances. On finances. This is going to be a, a great time that Saturday morning. Just sign up in the name of Cornerstone Baptist Church and then just come be with us that Saturday morning, August the 14th at 11 a.m. Online. It's a seminar online. Amen. Amen. I hate to leave you today, and uh, but uh, we, we've, we've got to go. Be back next week. Be back next week. I want to, I want to still be in chapter number six, but here's what I want to do. I want to find out, I want us to find out why is it that God told them, being the God of love, he said, destroy everything. Say these accursed things for me. Say this, but destroy everything but Rahab and her family. Why? You're God of love. Don't miss next week because it becomes a witnessing tool for us to understand, not to explain God, but to help us understand what God was doing so that we can say, Lord, I'm in. I'm in with that. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Come and look at verses number 20 and 25 and all of those even next week. All right? All right. God bless you. All right. Father, we thank you. We love you today. Bless our sister Demetria today, God. Watch over her and keep her and keep her family. Lord, we thank you for this time. Thank you for this church fellowship that we have. Guide us and guide our kids this week as they go back to school. God, we're looking to you for answers in this COVID season. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace, his shalom, as he continues to destroy every authority that causes your chaos. In the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. And amen. All right.